Hi there, Toy here, and it's time for some book reviews. So I am way late for my April book reviews, but I've had a lot going on. Get to that in just a second. Um, clearly, I'm having some technical difficulties today because I am doing this from my phone. I'm wearing headphones and using a microphone. There's still probably going to be lots of noise in the background because, like I said, we're having lots of technical difficulties where I am, but I am working through it. Um, I wanted to go ahead and get this video posted because I did not read very much in the month of April. And that's because, if you haven't heard, I wrote and illustrated a children's book in the month of April. Like, I, it usually takes me four months to do that. So because I did that in one month, it kind of sucked up some of my reading time. So I did want to go ahead and share the two book reviews of the books that I did actually finish in the month of April. So the first book is Teardrops of the Innocent, The White Diamond Story. So this is actually a book I picked up at a local author event a while back. So let me just get into the review. It says, I discovered this book at a local author event well before the arrival of COVID-19, but I didn't read it until the partial quarantine was implemented in my area. While I was still working during this time, I intentionally picked up this book because I remember the author saying that it takes place locally and mentions many landmarks in my area. It was nice to read about places that for a while I just couldn't go. Meeting the author of this book left an impression on me, and I must admit, I'm sorry it took so long for me to read this book, but I think I read it at the perfect time to truly appreciate it. Never thought I'd so enjoy reading about I-95 traffic. It's true. <laughs> Aside from COVID-19, this is a really good book without there being a pandemic. I adore the connection um, this book has to the past and the present and even like the contemporary style blended with the paranormal mystery. It really has something for everyone. A little bit of romance, a little steam, PG-13, lots of laughs, and some chilling frights. Um, I don't want to spoil the story for anyone interested. The blurb is a, is a great setup for what you'll be walking into with this book, but the author's ability to convey emotion and paint a setting will take you further than expected. I really enjoyed this book and plan to pick up more in the series, which I already picked up book two. Uh, if you live in the Tidewater, aka Hampton Roads area, you may also enjoy this book. Highly recommend it to fans of historical mystery, sweet love stories, paranormal encounters, and colonial and revolutionary American history. That was a lot. <laughs> um, it's a very contemporary type story, but um, the definitely feel the paranormal elements. Um, it's without, I don't think I'm giving any way, it's, it's a ghost story, but it has some real like historical value to it, both for the colonial time period, the Revolutionary War, the Civil War. I just think it's a really good story, and I'm so glad I discovered it and plan to read more in the series, and it's by Allie Marie. So let's look at the next book that I read. This one was actually a reread for me. Apparently, years ago, I mean, not that long ago, but when I originally read the book, I guess I never posted a review online, which was, you know, odd. So um, the review for this is very short, so let me just talk about it a little bit. It's called Monsters and Other Scary Shoes. <laughs> it's an anthology. It's a graphic novel anthology of monster stories. And I think what's really cool about this particular, there's two things that's really cool about it. First of all, I have the digital edition and the glow-in-the-dark hardback cover edition. Pretty sweet. Um, but what's crazy about it is, is even though these are monster stories, they're not exactly horror stories. It's an anthology, so some of the stories are scary. Some of them are lighthearted. But the central theme of all the stories is monsters. And what's really, I think, the best factor about it is that some of these stories show you that the monster isn't always what you think it is. So I, I love that. 
So here is the very short review that I wrote because like I said, I read it a couple of years ago, but I guess I just never, you know, reviewed it and I wanted to rectify that. So I reread it and left this review. This was a reread. I have no idea how or why I didn't review this book when I first came out. I proudly supported the Kickstarter for it. I loved it then just as I do now. I even got one of the glow in the dark covers with yellow eyes. Maybe one day I'll get my hands on one with the white eyes. This is a great collection of monster stories. There's so much variety here, each offering a different take on what it means to be a monster. This book is full of talented artists and writers ready to deliver you a vivid experience of fright, laughter, wonder, paranoia, and so much more. Highly recommended to comic book fans, monster fans, and fans of non-mainstream creativity. And again, I apologize for all the different weirdness with my phone because technical difficulties. <laughs> so um, just real quick, I realized that I gave my review for the first book but didn't tell you what the star rating was. I'll fix that. But it was a four star, I mean, sorry. It was a five star uh, read and so was this book. They're both five star reads for the month of April. Even though I didn't read a lot, I did write and illustrate a children's book. So there you have it. Hopefully it won't take me so long to get to May and I've actually been able to do some reading in May. So looking forward to that. Thanks. Until next time. Bye bye.